Hi there, my name's Emily. I'm a registered dietitian, and I'm gonna share with you my five steps to how to meal plan like a pro for beginners. So step number one is to figure out what days you need to cook for. And this might sound a little bit obvious, but something we might think about is, or something we might not think about is do we have plans to go out to eat during the week? Do we have, do we know we're gonna be really busy traveling a lot for work one day, so maybe we won't be around for dinner or be around for lunch? We might be out of town. Maybe we only have to cook two meals for the week. A lot of factors in there. So first figure out how many meals do I need to make for the week? Step number two is to figure out what your meals are. I like to kind of browse a couple different websites. I'm going to list all of my current favorite websites right here. I also share some of my favorite recipes of my own on my own website, so definitely be sure to check those out. But figure out what you want to cook. What are you kind of in the mood for? Stuff like that. Or kind of what... You don't even have to use those recipes specifically. You can use them for inspiration. Find something kind of that sounds good to you. What I then like to do is my partner and I utilize this weekly planner where we just write out which meals we're going to have each week because when we're in the week, we don't want to think about what we're making. We just kind of want to look at what did we establish. I'll show you an example right now kind of what we're planning on cooks. So we kind of divvy up the days deciding who's gonna cook when, and then we decide which meal we're gonna make that day. Step two, you have your meals. Step three is then to figure out what do we need to make these meals. So we use the Our Groceries app. This is not sponsored. If they wanna sponsor me, I would not be upset about it. But I really like the Our Groceries app. I'll include a screenshot right here of why I like it so much. It's really cool because you can connect on all different devices to share the same app. So if anyone adds anything to it, it's automatically updated on everyone else who shares that specific email address on the app. It makes a lot more sense when you log into it. As you can see here, we have, we, we like to categorize by the specific grocery stores. So if one of us are out and we're in the area and we see one, and we have a little bit extra time or maybe we're out in the burbs and taxes a little bit less, then we might stop by there. And it's a lot easier than to, instead of keeping like a physical list where like maybe you lift at home or you have a little bit more extra time at work, you got out early and you can stop by the grocery store, then you can just pull it up in your phone or whatever you utilize to check it off. And it's really nice because once you click it, it crosses it off and disappears from the list. So what we do is whether you could type it out. I typically know which ingredients I'll buy from what stores, depending on the deals. Um, I'll put it under that store in the list, or you could physically write this out. Sometimes we write it out under the different recipes on here, but just write it out all the ingredients you would need for that recipe. That is your step three. Step four is to cross off any ingredients that you already have at home. So we do not want to buy an abundance of rice or have an abundance of olive oil where you add that under the add that as an ingredient under the recipe but you have plenty of it or you have a bunch of it in bulk you obviously don't need to buy more of that until you run out so what i would do then is look in your pantry look in your fridge look in your freezer um, your spice cabinet wherever you have ingredients and compare your new lists, if you write it down, compare your new lists, or if you put it on a notes app, in the notes app or wherever it is you keep this list of ingredients, compare that to what you have in stock already at home. And then if you have, say olive oil, for example, or butter or red peppers or whatever it is you're, that the recipe requires, cross it off. So that way, when you're at the grocery store, you don't have to think about like, hmm, do we, do we have this at home? No, you do not. That, so that way it saves you money because we don't want to buy stuff in abundance and then we have too much and it gets old and goes rotten or 
goes rotten. That's that doesn't make sense. But it it expires and is no longer edible. I don't know if I want to say no longer edible because that could be up for debate. It's no longer safely edible, we'll say. But that way it saves you money. So that way, because we're all about saving money here and time. So that way the list you have is just the list of ingredients you need. That was step four. Step five and how to meal plan like a pro is to once you have that finalized list or that finalized cross off list, you can either write out a new list where it's just the ingredients that you need to pick up or you delete it off your notes app, delete it off. I delete it off our groceries. So that way just the list you have left is what you need. So that way when you go to the grocery store, that way when you go off to the grocery store, you're set to go. Those are my five steps on how to meal prep like a pro. It doesn't need to be this full extensive process. Sometimes people think meal prepping, they think making something in bulk for and eating the same thing every single day. It doesn't have to be like that. If you're a creature of habit, that's completely okay. What you could do is just buy a little bit more, maybe a, when you're planning out meals, if you're gonna have like beef and broccoli or rice or something like that, write that out for Monday and Tuesday and just buy maybe double the ingredients so that you either have it for lunch the next day or for dinner the next day as well. It's just kind of keeping those portions in mind to make sure that you have enough. And it's nice to kind of map it out and see also what you have to get. It also helps you from a stress standpoint because you have enough going on in your life. And I know that food sometimes isn't something we always want to think about. So, step one, what did I say step one was? Step one is figure out, step one is figure out what days you need to cook because we don't want to buy food that we're not gonna eat. Step two is to figure out what recipes you're gonna make. Step three is to write out all the ingredients you need. Step four is to cross off or delete ingredients that you already have so you save yourself money and time from buying more in abundance until you need some more. And step five is to finalize that grocery list so that way everything you have left will make your grocery trip a little bit easier. Some other trips that we'll add in there for honorable mentions is if you do want to plan by store, you can add that and divide your grocery list by store. That'll make it a little bit easier if you have the luxury of having access and the transportation to be able to go to multiple stores, but if you can only go to one, that's completely fine. Another little tip you could incorporate is kind of setting aside a specific day to meal prep every week. I like to do it either on Saturdays or Sunday mornings because I typically grocery shop, grocery shop on Sundays when everyone else in the world is doing it. Um, but that way it becomes a routine schedule. It doesn't have to feel like this big chore that you have to think about. This only takes maybe five, 10 minutes. Honestly, the hardest part is probably figuring out what the heck you want to eat. And that's when those websites come in handy or just maybe you have a recipes collection saved on TikTok and you can scroll through there and look through for some recipes you're interested in, or maybe you have some reels saved or some YouTube videos saved that you're interested in. Definitely reference those. You've been saving them, so may as well put them to use or find some inspiration from them as well. It doesn't need to be a complicated process, no matter what the world might make it out to be. So those are my five steps to meal planning like a pro. Dietitian approved, check. If you have anything that you feel is really helpful, feel free to share them in the comments. I always love learning from other people and love learning more new tricks and kind of how you used to do it because that's always the best way to learn is hearing from other people and constantly thinking about how you can do it better. But also if you've settled into a pattern that works for you, perfect. You don't have to do much more than that. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you want 
let me know what you want to learn next. I'm thinking about making specifically talking about like meal plant or I'm specifically thinking about meal prepping, tips for that, potentially like grocery shopping on a budget, how to navigate the grocery store, questions like that. But let me know. I'm so excited to share this with you. Or I'm so excited to share these little tidbits with you because I know when I first got to grocery shopping and being an adult on my own, it was a little bit of an overwhelming process and it doesn't, it doesn't need to be. So we'll catch you next time. Bye.